see the future. Thank you, by the way. Future, future Huey. Huey just gets more soigné over the years. Which is your word of the day, by the way. Oh, it is Thursday. The weather is it's actually pretty warm where I'm at. I got desk fan on, ceiling fan on, AC on. So I'm feeling pretty good now. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Heck yeah. Um, Twitch is like, oh my god, Twitch. Twitch. Hopefully the stream's working for everyone because it's really having a hard time with me. Is this, is, so, is the stream going fine for, for everyone else? I don't want to get, you know, too deep into into everything if if you guys are also suffering in streams like Brian is. But it looks like it's good for everyone else. It's just it's just you, buddy. Cool. It's that's, just you. I'd rather it be just me than anyone else. So I just never work because it keeps like buffering and stuff. But anyways, cool. Glad to know we are good. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Top Clack, your weekly source for keyboard news and and discussions and interviews and other mumbo jumbo and buzzword, 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 buzzword. Um, I I, I believe. Thank you so much. Away. 11 Thank months. You. Oh, you're going to be heading to that one-year club next month when we celebrate our two-year anniversary, which is when we first started it. Speaking of buzzwords, Brian, I mean, this is off-topic, but, like, I don't know about you guys, but, like, around work, for me, and, like, around a lot of the tech news I'm reading, machine learning. That's your buzzword, everyone. Machine learning. Before, like, That's, yeah, five okay. years ago, it was everything is the cloud. Now we're, now we're on to machine learning. So that's... That's your buzzword, everyone. That's that's your that's your. I don't know why I said. I don't know. That has nothing to do with anything um, that I'm talking about. So let's hit this intro. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this wonderful episode of Top Clack on the 26th of July. Um, today we do not have a guest, but instead we have quite a bit of news. Fortunately, um, Geek Hack is back up, which is where quite a few of our news topics are today. Um, a lot of you guys may have known down for quite a bit earlier, so it's back up yeah. now. So that's that's today's, cool. Today's episode would have been really interesting if Geek Hack had remained <laughs> down during it, because like half of our news or more would have just been irrelevant. We wouldn't have been able to show anything. So we're we're happy that got fixed and it's back up and now we can we can do the things. We have closed the entrance form for the cat profile giveaway that we started last episode. So that is now closed. That closed about an hour ago at five PM Pacific. And uh, you know, we have all the entries in and we will we will be doing a live RNG so you guys can see that uh, you know we're not gonna cheat or anything. That'll be that'll be cool. And that'll that'll come after our news, so just sit tight for that. We will we will start with the news, but as usual, start with just a little a little mail call. Yeah. And uh, what, what do you what do you have, Huey? Because I actually don't think I have anything at all. This week in the mail, I got something pretty cool. You guys might have seen me build it yesterday, painstakingly, but I got my meme, and I got to be really careful when I hold this up because I don't have the screws yet, so I can still like take the keyboard apart. I'm not gonna do it, but. Um, yeah, it's a meme. It's a gasket mount, 65%, um, in a very small group buy that Krelbit of Switch Mod did. Um, sounds pretty groovy. Looks pretty groovy. Um, it does have, you know, its fair share of issues for being a prototype and a, a small scale prototype. But um, typing experience wise, it's um, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty much uh, the bee's knees, as the kids say. I'm quite liking it, even though I've only typed on it for about 10 minutes before the show and 20 minutes last night. But of the 30 minutes I have typed on it, it's been pretty good. Um, Beth, Beth, thank you so much for that Twitch Prime subscription. So that's basically what I got in the new... The what new what keys are you using on that right I am using the best version of Dolch, a.k.a. Kekon Dolch. Heck yeah, okay. You had Toxic on it before, didn't you? I did, because everyone wanted Toxic on the meme, because Toxic is a meme. But I decided I wanted this to look decent um, for the show and for my normal use, so I threw on Kekon Dolch, which is pretty groovy. Otherwise, if I don't use this Dolch, I might switch to Soware. Soware. Mm. So, 
bloody. TBD, 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 TBD. Um, how would you, Brian? How was how was your week? How's your week? The the, the uh, life of Brian. It's been going pretty well. I I am like mostly wrapped up for prepping for the Seattle meetup, which is really cool. Uh, tomorrow I'll be heading over to Seattle, and I'll probably be finding a place to stay out there um, for the night with my girlfriend somewhere at some point. I'll be going to dinner with Brian Norbauer tomorrow night. That'll be cool. And then, you know, the next day, Saturday, is going to be the meetup. And that's going to be a ton of fun because I'll get to, you know, chill with all the keyboard nerds and show off show off my awesome meme as well as lots of other cool boards. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. That's awesome. I really wish I could make it this year. Unfortunately, I can't make it this year. i got a lot of work commitments to do. Um, it's okay though. I'll I'll be working on a lot of keyboard keyboard stuff for for y'all while I'm while I'm here and here back home. So that will be that'll be a good time. But man, we're gonna be looking forward to those super awesome pictures at the meetup. Um, yeah, we'll definitely be talking about it next week. Hopefully, that'll be yep. a pretty pretty good time. I'll have a quick like recap kind of section on. Um, Maybe the, we could yeah, get so. um like like Brandon on or. Mark on, or you know, what, 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 one of the one of the cool kids actually you know, will also be going there. You know what I'm saying? And they can like both of you guys together can give a recap, kind of like what Pudsey and I did for the New York. But you know, you and you and yeah, 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 yeah. that would be really cool. But I have some bad news. I don't. I don't hear bad news, Brian. I don't want. I'm news. actually not going to be here next episode, and I didn't Oof. realize it until just now. Oof. I I am going to be in Idaho. Ooh. Yeah, little a little like quick couple day vacation um, with my girlfriend, and uh, yeah, we're going down there to see Death Cab for Cutie and just kind of Ooh. get away from Washington for a bit for a couple days. So that's that's kind of a bummer that I'm going to miss Talk Black though. Man, you should do a special episode like what I did with Pudsey for the New York then, and just have you and one person who went to the I, Seattle meet up and like could do that. Do yeah. a, do a one on one with them and you know have that streamed. It was only, like when, I think when Pudsey and I went on, it was only like an hour hour 15 maybe hour and a half longest but we just talked about the meetup and i was like that was it that was cool you, you should consider yeah, doing could, the same thing after the meetup i could totally do that yeah it, it'd probably be i mean i think i i leave thursday the second and i get back on either like late saturday the fourth or late sunday the fifth so i'll have to find some time to carve out for that or maybe i can like somehow do it on the road you know, in my hotel. Hopefully, whatever, yeah. Hope, hopefully, you can do it like either right after the meetup, or like you know, like the day after, or two days after, something like that. Before you went, yes. Yeah. That you would know, be. We'll, we'll figure that out later. Um, you know, we don't even spend too much time on that now. But uh, yeah, so just know that stuff stuff's happening, and uh, we'll try to get something, some, yeah. something like that. Because I, I would love to do a recap. Uh, That'd be with great. Brandon or someone else. That would be absolutely would be, would be awesome. Great. Anyways, and with that, thank you so much, Toasty, for three months in a row of that tier one sub. I just got the coffee beans in today, by the way. They smell absolutely wonderful. Fizzkeys, once you are also on that 11 months in a row club, meaning next month when we hit our one year anniversary, you're going to be one of the awesome select people who have uh, subscribed every single month since we opened our subscriptions, which, you know, thank you. Thank you so much, so much, so much. Heck yeah, that that's is, been that is awesome. really, really cool. So, are we ready to do the news? Yes, I think I think we are. Also, shout out to JTM83. I don't know if we, we I did. said that. I don't know if we did, but thank you so much. Yeah, he, uh, he, he subbed with Twitch as well, so thank you for that. News. And with that, let's roll on to the news. Top clack, roll out. Um, let's start off with... This first little little itty bitty thing I saw that was um a bit a bit different a bit different um honestly just, I, just a bit just a bit different it's just an interest check for milled DSA keycaps um yeah texture on top is really really interesting I'm not gonna lie that's probably like the cool part for me I think this would be really cool I know you know a lot of people really liked those um those texture bro caps WASD if you made like you know something like that you know a WASD with like really cool textures like that that'd be really cool with a escape accents I think that'd be really cool to be honest um maybe maybe not my personal style but I know for a lot of people who like that kind of thing like this would be like the creme de la creme of of that so 
Yeah, totally agree. One thing to keep in mind is, um, you know, being being milled, these are out of aluminum. So they are metal keycaps, in essence. And you something could... I've learned from metal keycaps in the past, at the very least, especially ones that are, uh, you know, of this kind of thickness, is they are going to be heavier than other caps. Meaning they're going to make your switches feel lighter. So keep that in mind when you use something like this. I think it's cool. You can get these, technically, you know, you could get these blasted, and then you can get these anodized if you want fancy different colors. Um, one just small little funny marketing thing I want to point out is it says these are made from marine-grade aluminum, so they won't tarnish. Is marine-grade aluminum the new aircraft-grade aluminum? <laughs> I, I don't I don't know, man. That's just another buzzword. <laughs> In reality, for keyboard cat purposes, it's probably pretty largely irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. yep but yep, yep. what is not irrelevant is this interest check for <sighs> the luminescent keyboard. But um, name the, subject yeah. subject to change. Yes. So this is this is by that one Oscar in collaboration designed with Teslatron, who's also done the Lumina keyboard that will be launching fairly soon. Actually, I'm supposed to be getting a prototype of that pretty darn soon, Ooh. which is going to be pretty cool. Then I'll have some thoughts on that as well, but we'll talk about that another time. Right now, we're focusing on this. I'm not entirely sure what the new name is going to be. I think he's still deciding, but uh, they felt, and a lot of people seem to have felt, that the Luminescent and Lumina were a little too close and uh, you know they, they want to do something a little bit different here. But as far as the design goes, I think this is pretty darn awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. As you can tell from, from the meme, it has a huge forehead. And I'm a really big fan of keyboards with huge foreheads. And the Luminescent um, name pending change is one of the ones I, I, like, I like the most. I like that huge forehead. It feels classic to me, like on a real force, you know? Yeah. Some people aren't a fan of that, but, uh, but I am. So there you go. That's themed around a jellyfish, which is very random to me, but uh, I, I appreciate the uh, you know the uniqueness of it, if nothing else. It will have a top mount plate, uh, brass weight, possibly aluminum, which at that point is more of an accent, not a weight. Plate options are going to be aluminum or brass. The angle will be 7 degrees, which is... Pretty pretty right in my wheelhouse for comfort. I like that seventy yeah, degree range. Yeah, that's 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 pretty that's pretty fine. Yeah. Yeah, he has uh, you know a pretty typical array of colors, and it's also going to be manufactured in the U.S. Shipping should be around thirty dollars to the U.S. So it's kind of interesting. I think we're starting to see more and more boards here be manufactured in the U.S. And I wonder if like that actually saves on overall cost after you take in the account of like, usually things in the US are more expensive than in somewhere like China, for instance. So I like, mean... I wonder how much savings is really there. Like you're reducing shipping costs in the US, which is cool for people with US, but if you're just upping the cost of the actual product itself, does it really matter? So I, I feel like I feel like there's, there's, there's different distinctions about that. First of all, thanks uh, Megaforce for 11 months in a row of tier one sub. Because usually when I think about, you know, people sourcing a, a U.S. manufacturer, they're usually trying to get, you know, mid to high quality. And then they compare that price with, like, finding the cheapest bidder in China is what I usually will see. So it's, like, kind of unfairly. So I don't know, like, what 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 they're going to be looking for in terms of, you know, what kind of, what quality of U.S. manufacturer. But hopefully decent, you know, hopefully without big issues. Yeah, I don't. I'm definitely not worried about a quality thing. I just, you know, I, I'm worried about the the difference in delta between the cost of manufacturing here versus there versus just, the cost of shipping you know, I, from here or there. Because you can reduce shipping cost all you want, but if it increases the manufacturing cost by more than what you're saving on shipping costs, it's largely irrelevant to at least the people in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, regardless, I do like. Uh, the board itself, I think it is a pretty darn striking and simple. It is a 60%, not a 65%. A lot of people seem to have trouble kind of seeing this in the picture, I suppose. I don't know. But uh, it is definitely a 60%, not a 65 
So I think he's probably still looking for naming suggestions. So, you know, if you wanted to chime in there on that thread and maybe throw something out. You know, maybe. Seafoam60. Seafoam. I don't know about that. I'm trying to remember what my recommendation Riptide60. Uh, Riptide. I, uh, I, I, I recommended Medusa Soa, which is the Latin name for jellyfish. I probably butchered that pronunciation, totally honest. But, uh, there's some pretty cool names going on in the, the the thread there, so we'll have to wait for an update to see what the name will be changed to. But definitely looking forward to this hitting the group buy stage because this is probably a must buy for me. Yeah, it's uh definitely definitely up there for ones I look into. Speaking of something I would actually look into for work purposes is our next topic, which is the Kickstarter for the Hex Gears X1 mechanical keyboard um this is a kickstarter that's you know already passed its goal of it passed its goal of thirty five thousand dollars in one day by the way which is great under under a day so this is going to be this is made by hex gears but will be distributed by kono dot store so input club as a company of you know people who do keyboard things actually don't really have any input on how this is made this is all hex gears they're just hex gears just using Kono as a store, but let's talk about this keyboard because chiclet style, low pro, aluminum case, chalk switches, USB C, um, has a battery for Bluetooth, um, looks decent. I I kind of dig the design honestly as something I probably wouldn't use at my desk, but something I would either use on the go or like while I'm laying in bed, and my PC is across the room with my TV. And I just need something like to just lay on my bed with. Yeah, no, it'd be um, it'd, it'd be really great for that. So one thing I'm 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 worried about, which has been mentioned a lot um, in the discussions, is about programmability because we don't know anything about hex gears really, and how they you know consider things with programmability. So that's kind of like a big toss up on like basically you know depending on your usage, this board could just be like what it is, no changes to programmability. You got to use it how they intended, which is, you know, for a lot of people can be a very disappointing factor. For me, it will be as well. But yeah, that's 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 kind of one of the one, one of the big things about it. But for me, yeah, the I, Bluetooth is kind of like Bluetooth. I can take it to work, use it as a work. I can travel with it because when I travel, I'm just going to be typing basic things as I go along. Comes with the cool cases. Um, yeah, I think I think this day and age to have any kind of keyboard especially a mechanical keyboard that isn't programmable is an automatic failure. I like how in, it, in that category at the very least. It's Hex Gears engineering team created the X1 with one concept in mind, freedom except for programmability. Yeah, which, you know, as we know in the enthusiast community, that's kind of important. Yeah, but of um, course, this is less for enthusiasts to be honest and more for People exactly. who already like chiclet style, like this is a laptop, uh, not a laptop, but this is a uh, keyboard I'd recommend to my brother. My brother likes chiclet style keyboards. Um, he just does. He, he he types on a normal MX switch, no matter how nicely lubed, no matter what kind of switch he is. He thinks if it has more than like no travel, that it feels mushy. He feels he. My brother believes travel is mush because it's wasted time and space for him, which is fine. That's his preference. So for him, I'd recommend something like this, where it's still chiclet style, but it's probably the best chiclet style. You can go for, um, yep. But like that's that's kind of it. But for me personally, you know, I wouldn't daily this. I would I would toss it in a bag and just not ever worry about it. Except for I'm traveling and like oh I need a keyboard. Oh, a good thing I left this in my bag. That's yes. that's it for me really. Oops, did not for make sure things. Um, but as for the details for this, uh, ninety nine bucks for either color. Gets you, you know, your your X1 it has RGB, multi device Bluetooth, um, and uh, comes with uh, the keycaps, obviously. So actually, I think the the price is pretty reasonable for what you get. Estimated delivery is November, so about four months away. So yeah, I I think it looks like a product with potential. It's you know, as usual. It's just going to depend on your use case. Yeah, so so actually one thing is I thought it was just really interesting, just like a small little quip, which is Hex Gears is you know founded by Germans, German company, and they're not using the the German, the new German low pro switches, 
They're using kale. From cherry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that, is, that is kind of interesting. Also, uh, Fatal Ruin 023, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. I didn't miss that. Thank so. you. Thank you. Thank you. See so, honestly, this case, this is this would be a good good keyboard to recommend to like family, friends who are, you know, mech curious, but not willing to go all the way, or they just like something like this. This is this is great for someone who who loves that Mac aesthetic, that Apple aesthetic, and only wants to keep to it. I think that would be like that's that's for them. That or travel board. Um, thank you, Tycho the Builder, for that Twitch Prime sub as well. So yeah, that is the Hex Gears X1. Go check it out when you have a chance. Speaking of things that you should consider checking out when you get a chance is this next interest check for the Dopio or Dopio 80% custom mechanical keyboard kit by Play Keyboard. Play Keyboard has most recently done the CA66 round one, which their round two is going to be coming out soon. They've already done this group buy in Taiwan and China, but this is going to be their interest check for the international markets. And this is a TKL. With interesting chamfer on the top edge that I think is very very hit or miss look for a lot of people center USB port you got LED indicators on the top um, top uh, left that's the side similar to but inspired by um, the 8x as far as I can tell for the indicators uh, let's see what, yeah. what do we have wind keyless send you layout or normal layout Two hundred and forty dollars for the base colors. Sixty sixty three aluminum. Uh, the bottom is going to be a they say a firm plate. The option for a PC bottom plate for the RGB underglow PCB. Um, the plate's going to be brass. Is probably going to be an option along as aluminum. So yeah. Yeah. As far as a custom TKL goes, this is fairly inexpensive in comparison to a lot of other, um, you know, quote-unquote, higher-end TKLs on the market. But uh, I, I actually do like the design of this one. One thing that I'm always a fan of is having, like, the bottom part of a keyboard, like, all just all touch, like, your desk. So it has, like, a flat side profile, basically. It's just all angled. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I'm a really big fan of that, because I feel like it gives you... Uh, a nice, more muted sound when you don't have, like, feet, for instance, or, you know, a bunch of it not touching your desk. 97k beat. Thank you for the Twitch Prime subscription, by the way. Arigato. So I think the big, the big part of this is people who want a big aluminum TKL, and then they see that price tag of 240 for special colors, and only $10 more for special colors, which, you know, it's decent honestly yeah no I, I think the value se seemingly so far the value seems like it's definitely there um i'm a little curious about if that price includes a pcb seems like it might but they don't really say so that would be something to consider as well i yeah. think these days it's kind of you know you, you generally speaking have to include a PCB in your I'm, PKL? I'm 100% confident it does because it's a center port USB and you can't use exactly, yeah. the 87 T, um, PCBs for it. So. so yeah, 240 base price including a PCB is pretty good, honestly. will be interesting to see where this winds up when the group buy starts and you can get some final details on it at that time. Yeah, I you know I probably wouldn't get it, but if I was a person that was looking out between the 8X and then I saw this on the horizon, I definitely want to like double check if I really wanted the 8X compared to this. Yeah. Um, so, cool beans, cool beans, cool beans, cool beans. Um, speaking of beans, beans are on plants and plants have leaves, which moves on to our next interest check which is the fox lab leaf 80 80 80 80 this is by fox lab who's been doing quite a few things like the orange tkl time tkl and they're hitting us with another tkl uh, very they like their tkls yeah very interesting curve Simple. on the sides yeah it kind of reminds me of uh what is it the dolphin yeah 
Yeah, I think it's a lot more elegant here because it doesn't like flare out. Um, this is this is pretty nice IMO. I I think the design is pretty good. I like the leaf weight. I don't it's like that of, yellow color. I think that yellow color is atrocious. I, yeah, it's, I don't like that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty gross. As the first thing I saw was that yellow color. I'm just like, nah, sorry guys, that's just that's bad. Um, yeah, it looks that? like he does have a raw prototype, so there's at least one picture of that in the thread. Um, yeah, it looks like there aren't any more. So at least he has a physical prototype in hand for this IC, which is always nice to see. Other than that, not a whole lot of information. No angle, no know. price but... estimates. It, at least we'll know it's going to be the standard A87 B7, B87 PCB. So you can get a PCB at Liku, you know. Alpha support is TBD, and I think that's going to be the really interesting thing for uh, the case, for the plate, um, or the optional plates. But you guys know, a lot of people still like Alps for a lot of good reasons and a lot of bad reasons, um, but we'll see. We will see. Yep. I wish we had more information. Usually Fox I, Labs I, I is, I actually, Fox Labs is usually really pretty like good at giving us information. Usually. But. Yeah. I, this is something I would I would get. I dig it. Yeah, but speaking of, you know, things th 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 things, th things you can dig, you know. No, nah, I'm not going to do this transition. I, wow. I, 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 have, I see where you're going with that. I had, do it. Yeah, I had do one it. planned, but I won't. So we're moving on to our next interest check, which is the Reborn 60, which has even less information. All we know is this is Water Lee, and he would rather show a new 60% keyboard to us, which we call he's, he calls the Reborn. He's considering making a prototype and is wondering what do we think. Yeah, this is about as raw an interest check as you can get. Uh, virtually no information, very minimal uh, renders, and there's not even any renders of like a complete board with caps on it or like. But you get almost nothing from this interest check. So I will say, as an interest check, this is kind of a failure. It's the top mounts. Um, yeah. Case the top and bottom clamp together. The plate clamps into the top. There's a weight that goes onto the bottom. The weight is extruded on one side to have almost a pokeball-ish symbol, but not. And on the inside, it's a flat plate. That's all. That's all we have to go on. And the the sides have that little sweeping curve. And it looks like those are either those could be either. So there's screw holes. Those are screw holes, not LED holes. Okay, there we go. And that's all we know. Yep. That's I I actually really dig the weight design. So I've I've always been a fan of weights that are just like really abstractly designed and like you know, like from the top you just push it in and like it, it shows up a design on the back like that. Kinda like uh the how Mira. the Fiel or the, the Mira or like the Fiel does it. I mean the Fiel's kinda reversed. But the, the new the, Fiel the, on the inside. The new Fiel how the new Fiel does it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I, I'm really a big fan of that. I think people should get really interesting with the weights because it just adds a lot of personality to the case. So looking forward to seeing where this one goes. But right now, I would, I would uh, have to say it's pretty out there at the moment because we just don't have enough information. Yeah. But hey, let's, Give us the info. Let's, 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 let's reverse the information and from having no information to moving on to a group buy that's down to give us what we need to know. So this is why I reconsider it. This next group buy is for the South Paul full size group buy open for another three days. 27 spots left. So get on it if you want to be a hot boy with a left hand numpad full size, which would be a pretty dope work board IMO. Yeah, for me this is a win because I am left-handed, and I also like having more space on the right side of my keyboard or my mouse during gaming. So, so having the numpad on the left side is automatically a win for me. Here, here, here are here are the deets for y'all. We got win key, win keyless options, QMK support, PCB, USB, Mini B, eight point five degree angle layouts are dependent on your plates. Um, your chassis can be either the 6061 or 7075 aluminum, which is pretty unique that you have both aluminum options. Of course, you can get a plain bottom or the integrated brass, brass weight bottom. Um, finishes raw or anodized or hard anodized. Um, yeah, so pricing, we've got 210 for the base chassis, 6061, no weight, no finish. 20 if you want anodization, which means you want actual color, you're at 230 for a normal board. At this hard anodization color, you're at 260 because it's another 50. Of course, you can upgrade your aluminum, you can get a brass weight, you can get some a ton of other extra stuff, and of course, those can add up 
quick, but that gives you a lot of different options, which is really, really cool. A lot of price points to hit from, I want a base simple board, 210, you know, raw basically, and it works, and this is how I want it to like, I want this really awesome aluminum, this awesome color, um, I want these weights, and I'm gonna be baller. Yeah. Half it's plate. You can, Half yeah, you can plate. Get, you can get skews that are as low as 210, or you can get skews that are like upwards of $600. <laughs> it's like pretty big difference, but you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be super awesome. And if you want laser engraving, you can just send your DXF or Illustrator file, and they will do your engraving on your design, on your, uh, on your weight for you so like, you can have like you know an awesome weight that says you know like brian is the best ish ish yeah don't forget the ish um, this group by in particular closes friday the 29th of this month so about three days left to get on this this is up your alley 27 spots left as well i think it looks really cool man i kind of want to get one of these i kind of want to get one too right Oh, hold on, let me go check the top class PayPal account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could get like some like we could get like some mid range shit here. You know, like the standard anno. Ooh. Um, you know, keep it keep it real with the sixty yeah. sixty one aluminum. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe forego the brass weight because the brass weight is like over half the price as the case. I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, vicious. Anyways, all jokes aside, I do like this product. I think it looks pretty promising. Yes. I'd be on board. Um, you know, speaking of boards, cutting boards are a thing, and you need an edge to cut them. And this is an edgy group buy, because a lot of people are going to be hit or miss with this, which is the group buy for the Zelant, which is a Zelanted board. Ha, 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 ha. The layouts I, are just... Yeah. You know, slant. I don't want to describe it. I mean, it's it's more or less a plonk that's staggered. An ortholinear that's staggered, I guess, maybe, is a better way to describe it. It's different. It's out there. We we talked about it when it was, uh, you know, an IC a while back. And uh, now he he has all the stuff in hand, and he is ready to start the group by. In fact, it's open now. So if this kind of, like, weird oddity is right up your alley... Well, maybe it is. This is a pretty interesting little product. And it's pretty inexpensive, too, all things considered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's very, very inexpensive, which is absolutely great for a lot of people. You know, it's a... Uh, it can be a sharp tool for you. It can be a sharp tool for you. <laughs> so, if you're interested, check it out. Check out the group. I, I think something like this... You know, there's there's a big niche in this community that I think a lot of, a lot of times... Brian and I overlook, and just mostly because, you know, we're really not into these small niche kind of products, but we recognize how awesome and cool they are, and that they do actually provide a lot for our community, because there are a ton of people who are into that kind of thing. Like, when I first got in the community, I actually thought the plank was the coolest thing in the world. Like, I actually owned three, two planks at one point in my life, and I'm like, I, I can't, like, use this like a normal oh. person, because no, totally, it's life, yeah. right? I, I have a plank now, but I got it as a review but I don't use it, That's uh, to be honest. Yeah, there's, there's tons of people out there that are just like, why would I use this, you know, four, five, six hundred dollar, like, super end game like, TGR, or, like, LZ, OTD, like, some fancy-ass, like, super epic board that's really premium in the community's eyes. It's like, why would I use that when I can just use a plonk that I paid, like, 60 bucks for? Bonk. Yeah. It has, like, a plastic case or something. Like... You know, people different different use cases, man. Different strokes for different folks. That'll always be true. And a lot of people just don't need anything like epic. Yeah, they want really interesting things like this. Mm -hmm. This is definitely interesting, especially you know, it's basically you know that sharp bladed look, and it's great to have a sharp blade when you're cutting up some tangerines. Which takes us to our next topic, which is three C three tangerine MX, which group I going over at the key dot company for both the 62 gram milky and the 67 gram milky top black bottoms tangerines which is which are high rose replica stems um pcb mount switches they're linear manufactured by gateron sold in packs of 65 91 10 ships early october 2018 um group by ends either august 10th or 20,000 units who knows who knows which comes first but uh yeah these look great these look great. 
I I think they look pretty good. I'm so you know this is not the first time we've seen a um, what is effectively a Gateron switch rebranded as something else. They're not hiding that it's not made by Gateron or that it is made by Gateron because it is made by Gateron. They list that right there. Cool. As we all know, Gateron switch has been around for years now and they are incredibly cheap, like super duper duper cheap. Um, so, you know, here they're kind of just playing around with things and upping the price. So I, so I, I, mean, I just did the calculations and before shipping, this is 60 cents per switch for a Gateron switch. For what quantity? Just for all of them? You can get a quantity of 90 for $54. I don't know. I actually didn't, I didn't measure how much that scales with the other ones, but at a quantity of 90 for $54, you're spending 60 cents per Gateron switch. Yeah. 60 all across. Versus, let's say, I don't know, what do Gateron switches usually cost you buy from other vendors? 20 cents? They're, they're 28? 25? I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure it's like well under 25. 25 like tops. I haven't bought Gateron switches in forever. Yeah, I don't I, even last know, time I, I bought them, I think I bought them for like 17 or 18 cents. I don't even know who sells Gateron switches. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like a lost thing in this community, it seems like. But regardless, this is, you know, a Gateron switch that is more expensive than other Gateron switches. And I have this problem with uh, the Revo Whites that we just got in recently, which is another kind of thing like this. It's effectively just a rebranded Gateron switch with a milky housing and a Gateron clear top and like a custom 67 gram spring or something. And the price is like much more expensive than other normal Gateron switches. So I was kind of curious, like if, if you guys, do you guys feel it's worth the the substantial price increase per switch just to have the tangerine stems um, and poten potentially you know a custom spring maybe. I, I, i'm curious of the value people perceive this as i know people actually go crazy for the tangerine switches but in reality it's just a stock gather on linear more or less and you know what i've learned from using the revo white i've actually put them in a board yet but just pressing a few of them and some other gatherons i have laying around i compared them with and like there's no difference. Like it's a Gateron switch, so. So I don't know. I'm curious to see what people think about this kind of thing. You know, you get your sweet tangerine stem, pretty unique, for an extra, you know, forty cents a switch or whatever. KBD fan sells them for twenty cents each. Okay, there you go. So about three times the price for a tangerine switch versus a normal Gateron linear. Feel like the color would be worth it to you? I guess that's fair as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just I don't know, man. Like, if I'm gonna use a gather on linear, like, I don't know if it's worth triple the price for just a different colored stem. But then again, I'm not trying to match anything with the tangerine. I think the only thing that's really different is if you get the 67, which has the mix mismatch mix match of the uh, black and white, which is technically you'd have to get two different switches to do such a thing that's fair in my that's the only the only the only main difference imo true in my experience the black bottoms feel a lot better than the milky bottoms in my experience yeah but yeah okay cool i mean if yeah if everyone thinks it's a it's a good good value have that color for triple the price that yeah, color maybe, maybe i'm wrong who knows should we save this next topic for la for the last topic topic because i feel like this next one is like a thing Pretty big. That's yeah fine. Yeah. right yeah is, so let's let's first. let's go over to this this topic here this over here is a store that just opened up punk interactive which has um awesome things um alex punk has recently ran the campaign mk twos and threes now he has the threes in stock he has the punk 60 and org 60 pcbs in stock if you're looking for some pcbs he has some cone feet some stainless steel switch plates and some stabs so if you want to keep it nice and simple especially with that mk3 60 percent kits to you know build up a uh, interesting looking case yeah so the reason i added this top of the dock actually was because, one because longtime viewers will know that we've actually had alex at punk interactive on the show before um both as a guest and as a guest for a hand wire race that we did like forever ago that was really really fun but um he's a really nice guy and now he has a storefront this is fairly new 
and he's got a couple things. He's uh, already got stock there, as you can see, like he covered. A couple things to note is that there are angled bases coming for the campaign Mark III, which I thought was pretty cool. Because one of the things that sets it apart right now is that um, it, it's it's flat. The bottom is flat, and it uses cone feet if you want any kind of angle. Which, like to me, isn't that interesting. But once you add an angled bottom into the equation, it starts to compete with a lot of the other like nicer HHKB or traditional. You know, I'm I'm gonna hold you off there and say that's not even the most interesting part for me. One of the most interesting part is you can get powder coat finishes. Like he offers some awesome, awesome finishes for his board. Like, if you go to the MK3 Secret Scent kit, like, one of the, the... Look through the pictures, like, some of those are some nice finishes. Yeah. Some really, 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 like, that that, that rich purple with that, that sparkles with that blue. Like, these are, just, these are some nice finishes, and I think, like, yeah. honestly, well, that will be a better draw for people than just angled bases, which are in itself is yeah. great. But no, like... for sure. And I was getting to that, but you just cut me off because you're an asshole. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, that is what I was going next with. With like, you can not only customize what color you want, you customize what finish you want, which I thought is freaking awesome because usually you can't do that. You just choose like one or the other. So he's really kind of going balls out here, and I think that the prices are pretty reasonable. It's kind of a bummer that the the HHKB version is fifty five dollars more than the standard version. But, um, you know, sometimes there's a, there's a give and take there, I, I presume. Either way, I think the kit is actually uh, pretty good, pretty well-priced, and has a lot of potential for what it offers. And I'm, I'm more looking forward to the angled bases, though, because, like I said before, I like all keyboard, man. I don't like feet. I don't like feet. I gotta have an all keyboard. So, looking forward to that. I might try to get, like, uh, you know, uh, a review sample or something. Maybe I can, you know, scam him into one. And we can, uh, you know, try out uh, a sweet new board, and we can check out some of the finishes on the, uh, the cases and plates that he does. Heck That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, yeah, everyone, check out the shop. I mean, come on, check at least check out those, like, awesome finishes, because you can get his stainless steel plates with those finishes, too, if you just wanted, you know, a super baller plate to accent any build that you do. Like, you can yeah. just, get a, just get a cool plate. Even that alone yeah. is kind of super awesome. Yeah, and actually, um, crap, I'm going to have to find it now because I feel I, I forgot to link it. But uh, he has a, a discount code right now that you can use on the site. And come on, where is it? Oh, here it is. So if you use uh, discount code July Summer Sale 2018, all one word, you get 10% off everything. So now's a good time to take advantage of that. I'll actually share that link in the post just so people have the, uh, the link available. But uh, yeah, like pre th thirty-three buck, thirty-three buck plate, stainless steel with cool finishes, or thirty dollars if you use the coupon code. Pretty pretty awesome, IMO. I'm looking forward to checking one of these out. Heck, yes. So now let's move on to some some controversial stuff. I like it's not really controversial, stuff. I guess. Okay, it's, it's, it's science stuff. Recently, Plain, um, aka Plain Po on Reddit and Keep Talk posted. Kale, a article, Kale box switch stem measurements and possible problems. And this has spawned a large amount of discussion in the last few days about people, a lot of anecdotal evidence, which is fine because that starts discussion. Um, and Plain is leading the way with some actual scientific numbers for different switches, X axis thickness, Y axis thickness. He actually brought it up on um, the Discord, our Discord channel. And I'm like, hey man, this is cool that you started this, but like, we need more data. His sample size for every switch is one, which is isn't enough um yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start right. measuring some of my stuff for him i said i'd measure some and i put i post my results so that's gonna be coming up as well but it does point out a very so even though these are very small sample size i feel like there's at least enough anecdotal evidence from enough people saying i have this issue for everyone really to investigate it's kind of like you know when people you know, in the community first started years and years and years ago, by the way, first started getting MX clears and everyone was like, you know, like breaking stems or, you know, pulling their stems out of the housing. And they're like, what's happening here? And people eventually found out, you know, MX clears are tighter. Um, and this is kind of like on the same vein of we have so much and evidence from people that it's worth investigating. And it's it's worth the concern, you know. Um, a Mike of Novel Keys has reached out to um, Kale and GMK about this. He's even put on uh, on the, all the box switch um, purchases 
on novel keys like hey this is you know a problem a lot of people are reporting keep that in mind um yeah what's interesting is that um you know obviously the science is there the facts are there people are having issues with this this is a problem no doubts about that but it's interesting that it took this long lock switches have been on the market for like a year now almost and like we're just now starting to see this become a problem so i wonder if either it did not happen with earlier units and something changed in the molds that made it so this started happening with some of the you know newer box switches or if literally everyone that was using them just never noticed to begin with so i actually did check on the recently built gone mx mini I, mini i have i pulled a few switches out at random and i do have some micro fracture micro hairline fractures on some of the uh some of the switches on some of the keycaps I have on this one with the uh, box blacks that I got recently. So, yeah, interesting. Bug Whisper brings up an interesting point. He might have actually meant this as a joke, but he says, Summer Heat swelling box switches to final form. I wonder if, like, the humidity or anything has any kind of change of effect on, like, POM. We'd have to get information from where all these people live who are reporting this issue. I don't think yeah, so. I, I haven't really checked either. I don't actually... I don't think I currently I have box so. switches in any board, so I can't really check. Also, Nebulon, if you have 100 Jade switches and calipers and you're willing to measure, we more data is always appreciated. Yeah, if that's never a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can only help. Like, after this episode... I'm measuring every single cat keycap I have, and then I'm going to start measuring switches. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Like, I'm just going to be a data monkey and data-ing way between Overwatch matches, probably. Because that's my life. Yep. Absolutely. So, so yeah, this hopefully is, we can get some kind yeah, of resolution. Yeah, I, I want to hear some resolution. Here is the problem. So, I'm going to start doing my own measurements on my side, because... All science seems to be verifiable by more than one party. So I'm going to start doing my own measurements, my own sciences. And I definitely want to see the results I come up with for my for my switches. I want to measure all my switches first before I even measure, you know, what keycaps have cracking. Because I want to see there's a correlation between when the keycaps are produced and if the sizes have increased or anything like you mentioned. The mold changes, because I think that'll be the easiest one to track first. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, well, yeah, that's, it's, it's a big, it's, it's, this is kind of a big deal for all of us to wrap our heads around. And I think right now really we just need deal. science. We, I need data. Yeah. We need, we need a lot more data. Um, we need, we need both kale and, um, we need uh, kale has their specs. There's kale specs are public. I know what kale specs are for the cross. I don't know what GMKs are for the receptacle. And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't give it to us if we asked. Maybe not. Um, but which Kale, is a bummer. Kale's but, data is public. I, I know how big this is. But this seems to be more of an issue on Kale's side anyways, because the box switches are having these issues, and no other switches are having these issues. Not even their normal line. What if uh, we he, use he, he older GMK the... switches? I mean, oh, oh, yeah, older GMK keycaps. I don't know if the GMK keycaps molds have changed either, right? Like, we don't know either. Well, that's true. But I think, I think you can easily test... People can test that by just using... <laughs> You know, newer sets of GMK caps on switches that aren't box switches, mm -hmm. and that'd be really easy to test because a lot of people have that combination of thing. So I, I would be willing to bet this is more on Kale's side. Probably, than GMKs. probably. But, you know, we're we're gonna have to wait for comments on both sides, and hopefully Mike, who is kind of like our pioneer with the Kale factory, the community can uh, can really shed some light upon this and get some answers for all of us. Because this is a problem and it needs to be fixed. GMK caps are too freaking expensive to just be, you know, breaking like that. And obviously, like, they're probably going to all still be usable. But still, you shouldn't be damaging products during basic use just because of these reasons. Yeah, so... Now, I, I do have some, you know, hairline fractures on, on keycaps here. I've, I've confirmed that. Uh, I'm not going to cry river about it because... It still works totally fine. It still works totally fine. Like, I see the issue, but, like, the keycap still works. There's no looseness issues. I can... Oh, there we yeah. go. But that's, like, me trying to flick it off. If I use it normally, it's not going to have an issue, but... 
So it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to say. Was, I, I've yeah. seen some with much more issues than others. Yeah, no, there, there was a, a, a small video or GIF or something that was posted earlier on Reddit. I think it was today of a guy who was uh, who had like used some used some GMK or OG cherry caps or something on tail box switches, and he swapped them over to his board that had vintage blacks on them, and like he would just like press a cap and it would fly off, Oof. which which is a really big deal. So. Oof. Yeah, hopefully answer to this very soon because this uh, this is only just beginning, and obviously there needs to be a solution. Yes. Yes. But indeed. On a happier note, let's move on. Let's move on to this. <gasps> That's such a happy note. It's like, oh my god. This, this, okay. This so for this giveaway, we had a total of 210 entries for the top the cat profile giveaway. giveaway. Yes. So you, yep. So we will if you can bring this up on stream, you can actually show the list of people and do like an art uh, random.org or something. I don't think I can show the list of people because it has all their user their actual username with numbers. So I'm not sure if that counts as like But that's that's public information, information on Discord anyways. Only if they're in the same if Discord you, server. And not everyone who's in our which Twitch. They, which they have to be to, to join this giveaway. But not everyone watching Twitch is in the Discord server. That's the only issue. Okay. That makes sense. Like, if I it guess. was like, if we, if, if we, like, we had that list on our Discord and did it, like, on text on our Discord, that'd be okay. But because Twitch is public and there are people publicly who aren't in the Discord, yeah, that's that's the only thing. Oh, I okay. I suppose. As far as I know, I I don't see how that would even be a problem though. Like, it's just you know an online username that's not hard to find if you really look. Hey man, but, some people go crazy about. But I know. guess we should probably take the safe road and not show it, even oh. though it's probably okay. But just for for protection on our side, top class side, I suppose we will not. But just know we do have a total of. 210 entries. It says 211, but the first column is for, uh, um, you know, whatever. What are they called? Just like the the headers. Column headers, yeah. So that so actually starts on. 210. Two. Brian, hit me a. Hit, hit up that random. Actually, I can do it on my screen. Okay. I can have a number do random that. generator. Yeah, yeah, do that. Okay, yeah, do okay, that. okay. Do that and tell me the number, and I will I will pull up the user. Okay, okay, ready, ready, ready. I'm gonna pull it on screen so you guys see. Google's gonna do the random number, okay? I'm using Google's random number. Minimum one, maximum two hundred and ten. No, no, no. Minimum two. No, it's, it's well, one to two hundred and ten. We've two. Unless you want to do just two to just two eleven. Just do, yeah, just do two to two eleven. Oh, okay. Way. The number will actually add up. Okay, you ready? Is everyone ready in I chat? Ready. Is everyone ready in chat? Let's, ready? let's find out who our winner is. <sighs> okay, everyone. I'm 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 gonna make this big. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow this up. Hold on, I'm gonna blow it up. All right, I am I am so ready for this. Okay, is everyone ready? In five, four, three, two, one. Number thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yep, number thirty-six. All right, that is. Xenophobia, X X I I N O P H O B I A. Congratulations, Xenophobia. We will message you on Discord. Yeah. After the show, I will hit you up. Or actually, Huey will hit you up on Discord because he has the set in his hand. And it will be shipping to you directly from him. Of course, shipping will be on top flax side, so we, we got that covered. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, you enjoy your new cat profile. Congratulations on your wonderful new keycaps. Oh, yes. I mean, says that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's is that true. It's probably not true. Right? No. <laughs> um, I don't even know if Xenophobia is watching right now, but I have seen that username before, so obviously he's someone that uh, has been around. Cool. Always nice to see it's it's someone that's like actually been supporting the show for a while. So yeah. congratulations, Xenophobia. We will hit you up after the show and get you your cat profile set. And hopefully you can, uh, you know, try it out and share some opinions. Because it is a prototype set. Always looking for feedback. 
Heck yes. Heck yeah. With that, let's talk about some of the awesome people who make giveaways like that possible. Legacy Frontier, one of our ever so super awesome sponsors. Sea Heck Frontier. They yes. are the gateway to basically the gateway to the Chinese keyboard community for us. Um, they run they proxy basically anything that you want to run that you want China to buy or you want China to look into. They're also running the group buy for the caps, keycaps as well on their side. Um, they got the group buy for the FNT 1916 going on right now as well. SA bubble. They're, they're yeah, they're they're just they're, they're proxy and everything. They're working on a ton of awesome projects. Um, they're going to be contributing quite a bit to us for our two-year anniversary, which we'll talk about after this coming soon, 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 soon. Oh, soon, yeah. Soon, we'll have thought up more. You can also check out Kono.store, which is Input Club's storefront, where you can find some cool things there. Of course, you got uh, the Triumph Adler TA90 set. That, that's still going, right? Yes. yes, it is still going. Join that because that is freaking awesome. Um, you will be able to get the group buy for the Cat Alpha profile there, like we were just talking about. That was the giveaway set. This is this is gonna be the final one. Cat Alpha, eighty bucks for a base set. Pretty darn respectable IMO. And of course, while you're there, you can pick up a top clack shirt. This is not a top clack shirt, although you can get this shirt there as well. But uh, you know, you can pick up both shirts and maybe some some sweet Hako switches. I'm very partial to the Hako Royals myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, Speaking of more here? switches, we got a novel keys hidden up strong with all those kale keycaps, whether they box switches or normal kale switches. Mike has a giant selection as well as awesome shirts, desk pads, and other awesome products. Check it out when you get a chance, especially when those um vitamin kits go back in stock and those let's split kits because those have been really popular for a lot of people in the community as well as a lot of his switches i'm possibly going to get some more silent blacks in the future we'll see we'll see i have i, I have ideas and i have plans i have hopes and aspirations yeah. i don't know if i'll make them any of them come true but yeah. hot dog a i'll quick, try a quick tease is he has told uh huey and myself that he should have enough of the new palm all palm linear switches coming out to send us enough to build a board yes i think there's one i think brian's gonna go to brian it's gonna go to brian for the first batch probably me because i am a linear snob yeah i i'd prefer to go to brian first anyways brian i have like a million projects and stacking up like one more is like yeah so i am i'm I'm really stoked really stoked to get a hold of these palm switches i should he says i should have enough to build a 60 percent, which is really really exciting I am way beyond hype to do this. So looking Hyper-ino. forward to that. I want to see how also, they compare to the RREs, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, you know, also while you're there, last thing but not least, you know, you can use promo code top clack, two words, to get five percent off your total order. That's site wide still, as far as I'm aware. So you know, get on that value. And of course, last but not least, we have Zeal Generation, which you can find at zealpc.net and that link there proprietor of all these sweet Zilio and Telio switches that have been pretty popular in the community. I really like the Telios a lot myself. I think they feel fantastic. And, you know, he's still he's still got the uh, the Zephyr group buy going on, I believe. Yep, he sure does. So it is a bit of a pricier product, but you get a lot of stuff with it, and it does look freaking gorgeous. Oof. I know that because I have one next to me, and it is freaking amazing, and it's heavy, and the PVD coating is gorgeous, and the antidote is gorgeous, and the tolerances are gorgeous. And it's an absolute freaking joy to type on IMO. You know what? I will be showing it off at the Seattle meetup if any of you guys are, are going there. You're gorgeous, yeah. Brian. Two days. Oh, man. The feels. Yeah. The feels. Also, shout to Jala Balala for that two months in a row of Twitch Prime, by the way. But yeah, Zeal PC, check out the Switches. Check out that Zephyr. Special thanks to all of our sponsors who continually help us make this possible, as well as you're going to be contributing quite a bit to the two year, which we'll talk about in a moment. But. Speaking of the two-year, you know, wouldn't be possible without all of you who are watching, you know, all of you who have supported us, all of you who have been subbing, have been donating bits. Um, I thank everyone so much. It's going to be a fun... It's, it's Oh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Let's really yeah. quick... Let's talk about this two-year. We, we, we kind of have to, like, hype it up just a little bit, a little, 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 little every single week, okay? I will start off... Uh, okay. ...by hyping... Um, what am I going to hide first? Oh, one of 
one of our sponsors has told us they will be donating a an amount of key sets greater than one and less than 20 for us to give away. I don't know what that number is going to be, but that's what I'm going to tease now. It might be a double-digit number. It might be. Yeah, we're going to have lots of epic things to give away. And just like last time, we'll have lots of fun contests for you to enter. And, um, you know, the, the, more, the more fun and the more effort you put into it, the higher your chances are to win uh, stuff. So it's going to be pretty awesome. So the date of the two-year anniversary special episode, it's going to be basically like possibly up to three-hour episode. We haven't really decided on how long it's going to be. Two and, two and a half is the realistic number, we hope. Hope it's gonna be on August twenty third. Um, normal start time. We just will be going longer than normal. Um, the co- we'll have a lot of awesome competitions. The competitions for the prizes will start either the week before or two weeks before, depending on the competition. And then it's on the day of the two year itself where we'll be announcing the winners. Um, so keep that in mind. So if you want to, you know, possibly enter some of our awesome competitions, which we'll be revealing very soon. Um, not today, but we're revealing them soon. And you want to enter them, you want to prepare your, your entry to submit and everything. Keep your eye out. We'll have it posted um, officially in an upcoming episode and on our Discord server. That's going to be fun. We have a lot of things to raffle, a lot of things. Um, yeah. It was like, it was outrageously fun last year, and it's going to be even better this year. Even better. It's going to be even better. better. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a little bit more streamlined, it's going to make more sense. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a ridiculous amount of really cool prizes. Is Zeal donating a Zephyr to give away? I don't know. Um, I hope so. (laughs) Probably not, but I hope so. I've asked him before, and, you know, I'm going to try to keep wearing him down. Because giving away a Zephyr would be pretty awesome. Uh, Do contestants need to be on Discord? No. I mean, on Discord, like in our server. I mean, yes. Well, the way we're doing things is is through like Google Forms. Yeah, but no, but we don't, don't technically need to be on the Discord server. No, we'd prefer it, but we prefer that. That detail is to be decided. Let's just say that. I'm trying to think of a scenario where like someone it like wants to enter and they support Todd Plaque, but like for some reason they can't be in the Discord server. I'm drawing blanks. I don't think that's really a scenario, but like. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll work on that detail. That'll be something we will work on. But uh, for now, we're going to roll a little bit over into a Q&A to round out the episode. So uh, you got questions. We got answers. You can ask anything. Preferably keyboard related, but, you know, we're not picky. And if you want to, if you have more questions about the two-year anniversary special, then, of course, you know, now's the time to ask those as well. So but I, w- I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, Brian. I have, I have things I need to ask you. Hmm. What are your what, what, now that I have my meme? I, I let's 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 meme to meme here, okay? Let's meme to meme here. Okay, I have it next to me, so let's continue. Perfect, to... perfect. So, what are your what are your thoughts? You've had yours for a, maybe a little less than a week, two, four days. No, I've had uh, I've had mine for two weeks now. Two weeks, okay, two weeks. So you've had yeah. yours for two weeks. I've had mine for you know less than two days. So, how how do you feel about the meme? I am, and I, I've been pretty open about this on the Discord, but, like, I've been ecstatic at how the meme group I turned out. And I know there are obviously issues with everyone's cases. Uh, mine was not an exception. I definitely had issues with mine if you guys watched my build stream. Um, but I think overall, I am insanely happy with how it turned out. Ooh, that's pretty bad. I don't have that, thankfully. This was in shipping, too. There's a hole in my box. Oh, that was shipping to you. Yeah. Okay. It, it was it was it was not secured well enough in shipping. Yeah, so, I wasn't a hundred percent happy with the way Jaime packed mine either. Like it wasn't wrapped at all. It was just kind of like amidst in, a bunch of like foam bubble wrap, which like in theory was like okay, but like I just give me like a couple layers of bubble wrap or something as well. But uh, you know, that that is what it is. But overall, the fact that we got uh, you know a pretty big. Um, uh, refund as well as keeping the boards i think overall it worked out pretty well i spent not a whole lot of money and i got a really cool product and i'm really happy with uh, the typing experience so i i can't complain that's what i have to say 
So, I've talked to Heine a, a decent amount last night about this. A lot of you guys don't know, Heine did a lot of the um, engineering background behind it alongside Krellbit. Um, there are definitely issues about this that make this the prototype that it is. For example, you can't mount the daughter board on the bottom. If you mount the daughter board, you will damage the port every single time you lift off, lift up the top of the keyboard. The top case like that's I, I've tried a lot of things I've tried shaving my port back I've tried shaving the daughter board so I could sit it back and re-drilling holes in the daughter board so it sits back more I did a lot of things and you know what? at this point I'm like unless I drill new holes onto the bottom of the board of, of the of the bottom of the keyboard I, I, it, I it's not so my daughter board is floating but packed with sorbethane so it's more rigid but still floating um, yeah, you know, mine came with some cosmetic issues on the outside, unfortunately, but like you said, for the price I got it at, even though I took, put, did a ton of work into this, um, I'm really, really loving the typing experience and technically it's only going to get better because funny enough, I don't have the screws on the bottom to, uh, to, to close my keyboard. Like I, like both halves will separate. Um, because I don't have screws to tighten the keyboard. When I tighten it, it'll actually, you know, clamp down the gasket, which is yeah, gasket which is the notes. whole point. So yeah. it should be. So right now, it feels great to type on, and it'll feel. It should feel even better once I have those screws in. Yep, that's, that's how definitely. I feel. But I built mine with um, retooled PCB mount uh, MX blacks, stock spring, but lubed with um, VPF 1514 absolutely wonderful they sound amazing they feel amazing um except for my home page up page down and end i use the mx super blacks which um actuate at like 325 grams and bottom out at like 650 um because i didn't want to lube like four more switches on stream because i took these switches out of my modern m0110 which is an hhkb size which means i wouldn't have enough switches for 65 percent so I was like, what should I do for these switches? And Invisibility and Olivia and chat were like, you should use these. And I'm like, I'm going to. You don't think I will, but I, you don't think I will, but I did. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. All right. So uh, enough about the meme momentarily, but if you guys have questions, make sure you put those in. Use the at top clack tags. We can see them a little bit easier. So, um, feel free to ask away, guys. Yeah, so Heine Bush, he didn't tag us because he just wasn't included into the format, but... If he said, he asked, if you had to choose one flavor of ice cream to eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? How long ago was this? That was... I don't even see this question. Right oh, here before, we go. Yeah. Sorry, I found it. 704. My apologies. If you had to choose one flavor of ice cream for the rest of your life... Strawberry. Strawberry. If it has actual strawberries in it. Strawberry. Oh, man. I don't eat much ice cream at all. I eat, like, I eat very little sweets, honestly, despite being a fat guy. Um, man. I might go with something like Rocky Road. You know, kind of classic, but offers a little bit of variety. There's a little bit a little bit more going on there. Rocky Road with Oreo bits or Rocky Road with, like, chocolate chips? Oreo bits, if the option is there. I've never had that, but that's I, I like that more than just, like, chocolate chips. If you haven't had Rocky Road with Oreo bits, you, you haven't lived yet, Ryan. Probably I haven't <laughs> lived. I don't know. I'm also a big fan of, like, chocolate, peanut butter, banana combination. Hmm. Like, sometimes I roll in the Cold Stone Creamery, and I'm like, yo, I need, like, a chocolate peanut butter smoothie, but I need you to add, like, a whole banana in that son of a bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you just blend that out. <laughs> it's amazing. Nebula uh, is asking, how do we feel about Alia switches? Uh, I'm kind of indifferent about them. I don't think they're particularly good. I don't think they're particularly bad either. They're kind of just, eh. It feels like... To me, it feels like a little bit better Silent Gatteron Brown. I know I think Krellbit has claimed publicly that he thinks they feel like the exact same, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong about that. But I think it feels like a a smoother Gatteron Brown that's silent. Um, also, I feel like it's maybe like a little bit more tactile. Still not as tactile as something like a Zeal Silent. But I don't I don't know. I, I, I've used them. I, I didn't hate them. 
but I wasn't in love with them either. I feel pretty neutral about them. So I've also used them quite a bit, but I, I've never tried a silent Gatoron Brown, so I don't have that reference point. I only have to compare it with another tactile silent switch, which is a Xylan, and, you know, Xylan's completely blown out of the water for me, you know, 10 times out of 10 and 11 times on Sunday. So, I mean, for me, it's like, why would I even want to consider that? Unless I was deciding between that and selling Gap Browns, which I don't know about. Which, actually, I was talking about this earlier um, on Discord, and I was thinking about actually, like, maybe doing, like, my own little Man of Interest silent showdown at the OK Corral, which, you know, I get Gatoron Silence, Zeal Silence, um, and Cherry MX Silence, and TTC Silence, and, you know, herd them all together and do my own keyboard sciences to determine which is the best of the worst. Etc. But we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, Aliaz, I just feel like there's so many better options than Aliaz if you wanted a silent switch. Or better things you could do than buy Aliaz, like lube your switches. Yeah. That's pretty fair. Uh, Smallman asked, did you already discuss the tangerine switches? Uh, yeah, we did. Looks like people already caught you up on that too, so we're more or less going to skip that, unless you feel like you still don't have enough info. Uh, Zambuman asks, what do you guys think of Type Machina's PGR? Do you mean the number one? No, uh, it's the, kind of. It's the, no, it's the, the, that's, the, that's a TGR board, right? Yeah. Or no, number one's no. Keyhole. My Keyhole, apologies. Yeah. I don't know. I, no, 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 no real opinion. It's just. Can you, can you link it? I don't know. I don't know where I can find this. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait. I think I just found it. Uh, do you mean just the Jane? Is it a Jane reboot? I'm gonna need an update on what you mean by that. Because if you're talking about the Jane, obviously that's, but that's a classic, right? Like people herald that as like you know basically the king of custom TKLs. It's you know it's it's gone down in a short history. So I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that for for now. Can we get a little bit of an update? Uh, the Ragin Asian, the Ragin Asian asks best sounding Gateron housing. I don't think any of them sound particularly good, but I, I guess if push comes to shove, I'd probably say the milky ones. No, no, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. Gateron does do all black housings, mm -hmm. all black matte housings, just like cherry. And if you can find those, those are the best, in my opinion, because I like a deeper, cleaner sound. Those kind of facilitate that a little bit better. Um, I can't seem to find them, though. Like, they're, like, insanely rare, apparently. I have some of the browns, and uh, I think I have, like, a couple of the other ones. Like not enough to do a full board. I'm really bummed out because I really want to use some of those as well. But if you can't find those, probably just the the milky probably have the best sound. I, I haven't tried the black bottom milky top combination yet, so I don't I don't have a, a preference on that. I, I do like how he spelled Gateron Gateron. Reminds me of a Tolberon for some reason. That's all. Uh, Texas Breakfast is asking what makes a gasket mount keyboard. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a vague term, like I've said in the past. There's kind of multiple ways to accomplish it. The general idea is that somewhere in the, you know, by the plate and PCB assembly, you have gaskets either on top or on bottom or on both or surrounding. So that way, when you're typing, um, you know, the, the pressure and the reverberation from, you know, the feeling and the sound are caught by the gaskets, giving you... I don't know, a slightly slightly flexier, slightly softer bottom out kind of feel and a much cleaner noise because, you know, rubber is really good at absorbing sound. So that's that's the general idea. In practice, I'd say it definitely works. Um, it's not life changing, but it's it's a it's a fairly noticeable difference in my experience. Um, I've only used the Meme and the OTD356 Mini, which both use very different gasket systems, but the result is more or less the same. Uh, Poochzog is asking, if I dislike typing on Sculpted Essay, but like all Row 3 Essay, what other profile should I try? I gotcha. You should try the teased cam profile that um, Kiriadov is working on. So what the keyboard, the, I mean, the keycaps you gave away earlier was the CAT, K-A-T, which is a profiled, kind of like a short essay. 
Uh, but they're all a sculpted short essay in a way, but still somewhat different. They're also working on one called Cam, which is like a shorter All Row 3 essay or a taller DSA, basically. I think that's worth trying if you like that all flat style. If you think that the dish, the, the, the dishness is too much, XDA, if you want a flatter top as well. And if you think All Row 3 essay is just, you like how it feels on top, but it's too tall, DSA is another, another option as well. And if you just, I, I don't know why, but G20 is also an option if you like all flat stuff. Um, it's kind of like the worst of all worlds, in my opinion. But it exists as an option. Some people out there like it. Um, I don't know who these people are. I've yet to meet one in the wild. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, those are your best options. Um Hope you can find good keycaps for all those to try out because, like, one of the best ways yeah. really is just to get those keycaps, try it out. If you don't like it, hopefully you can, you know, resell it or pass it on to someone who can also learn from the experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think Cam is probably a front runner once that starts to come out more because I think that's going to be kind of a winner for people like you. Uh, Geo is asking, good enough for silence? I don't really understand what you're saying. Alias. Al. Alias for MX Xylence? Or, or just silence. how quiet are Alias? I don't really understand the question. I don't know. Rephrase that, Geo, if you want an answer, because I, I don't I can't read. Xamamon says it's a uh, Jane with a massive weight for the um the uh thing. Okay. Um uh, sure. How could you go wrong? The Jane is obviously a insanely popular TKL. Even though there aren't a ton of units out in the wild, because it's a little bit more dated and a little bit more limited, maybe, perhaps. But uh, if they do a reboot of the same Jane with a bigger weight, then, yeah, it's going to be really popular. People are going to love it. It's probably going to be fantastic. Uh, <laughs> not, a, not a question for us, but I like that Pixel Pusher says, anyone want to buy my thousands of box switches? <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah this it really is kind of like a travesty at this point it's like so many of them are already out in the wild i don't, I don't know like i said it might have something to do with like the date they came out because people didn't know about this it took almost a year for people to see this i think the great um, plague of late 2018 box switches a mutation in the box switch dna cause a disruption in the <laughs> keycap ecosystem a disturbance in the force uh, Violet Vice Story is asking, what kind of innovation are you hoping to see slash would be a game changer in the community? I really want to see a GUI flashing, sorry, a GUI for flashing QMK that works like Bootmapper Client. Yeah. Uh, we've been wanting that for years. Literally so, years, Brian and I have been asking. Yeah. And basically, the common response is people working on QMK is just understaffed is what is what they say, which is fine. I mean, yeah. it's mostly all volunteer open source. So and, yeah, I'm not, exactly. I'm not putting my marbles in that basket. The QMK configurator, yeah. in my opinion, is the closest we'll ever get. The it, 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 is, it is very usable for people like for people that are beginners. Like, Kiwi used it really effectively. I used it really effectively. And we are not coders, like, in any sense of the word. Like, we're just like, uh, let me click on this and click on that. And, like, it worked. I know so how to click I, and drag. Is that enough? It is enough. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, Ooh. so I think I think the configurator is still maybe a little rough around the edges and maybe not as elegant as something like an all-inclusive um gooey kind of like boot mapper client you know i'd rather use boot mapper client because for me it's still way faster yeah. but uh but yeah the, the the qmk configurator is is a really big step in the right direction for getting people like us that mm. aren't coders or like professional users of that kind of stuff into things like qmk so, Brian, so what's the innovative game changer in the community you want to see innovative game changer in the community oh boy that's a that's a pretty big question. So, I think the current trend is going to be for different plate plate mounting styles. That's going to be a big trend for the next six months. Um, and plate thicknesses and materials. That's why we're seeing a lot of five mil stuff coming out. We're seeing you know more top mount as people get bored of top mount. They're going to start experimenting with other things, whether it be gasket mount or flex mount, like um, Tom Berry did, or other things. So I think that's going to be the current trend. But something that I personally want to see. Is I'm really happy that 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 envelope there is being pushed, but I want to see the bottom envelope be pushed as well. I want to see like more great boards at lower price points to get more mech curious people deeper into the hobby. Because 
a lot of people need that just that one board or that one experience as their jumping off point to dive into the hobby. Like for for in in Brian and Mai's heyday, as funny as this will sound to a lot of you, the poker was that board for so many people. Where like sixty percent didn't exist back then. So like when the first person like just saw a poker, oh, they're like yeah. they, the, they went the poker X came out. They went crazy. It was insane. And the fact that it was sixty percent was enough to, to launch people into the hobby. These days that won't cut it, right? These days to launch people in the hobby, you're gonna need a, l- a little more a little more gravitas. Um, so I think that. The, the, the innovation that needs to come to help draw people to the hobby, to help grow the hobby, um, is going to be something something along the lines of what we have now in terms of customs, but at lower price points. And I think KBD fans have been doing really good at that for getting a lot of people in, for example, with, you know, the um, if you want aluminum TKL, that's kind of decent, that 8X. If you want a ton of 60% kits that, you know, basically devalues the resale market of any other 60% tray mount, they got you covered with, you know, four different options. So, I think... Yeah, K- KBD fans is killing it right now. I, I've been saying it for a long time, but I really think we need to see more of these these mid-range kind of products that the everyman can afford, that, like, the average enthusiast doesn't you know, feel like throwing away a fortune on like a seven hundred dollar board once it's all said and done. We need more of that middle range. We have tons of entry level options all over, and we have tons of like really epic, like sweet, grade A group buys. But we just we don't have quite enough of that middle ground yet. And KBD fans is really starting to push into that territory, and I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I think the game changer would be trying to get the same value out of high end boards at a lower price. And like finding out what you need to sacrifice there to, you know, get that same kind of typing experience at the very least. Because you know, when it comes down to it, a lot of people they're not okay with spending, you know, four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars on a board that is just a housing and a PCB. Like then you still have switches, caps, you know, your your cable and you know other things, accessories, labor, and it gets it's too expensive, man. Like it can just be way too expensive for a lot of people. A lot of people like us, you know, we're we're lucky, and you know sometimes we can afford really cool stuff like that. But the average person, they often can't. So, yeah, definitely, yeah. I, I agree with Huey on on that. I think that's that'd be a really good game changer overall. Geo's asking why are bathroom doors smaller than normal. I don't know. I'm pretty positive my bathroom door is smaller than the other door to my room. Mine is not, so... Mine is not. Pretty sure mine is. I I don't know. I don't have an answer for that, though. Yours does look smaller, from what I can see, though. Mine, yeah, mine's... Well, I mean, it's kind of at a weird angle. Mine's, you can't okay. see my main door, because it's always off-camera over here. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. I guess bathroom doors don't really need to be the same size. But, what, like, wouldn't you, wouldn't you think they need to be bigger and, you know, in case you're, like, you're, you're, you're in a hurry, you know? And you, you, need, you need to barge through, you know, fit through nice and easy and, you know, get, yeah. get, get the business done in a rush? You, you, think had, of- you, had a, you had you had a long <laughs> day of Taco Bell value menu. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, you had, like, hot wings also the night before. <laughs> and, uh, you just you really just need to get in there. I don't, I, know. I don't know, man. I don't have an answer for that. Good question. Uh, Giz- Gizmoplex doesn't say anything, but he links a video. But I'm gonna somehow. It's uh, Anthony's it stream. He when he was building the um, the TGR one. Uh, wait, the TGR Jane or the Key Colt number one? No, the uh, Jane, the, the new Jane, the the big one. Yeah. Oh, it's showing it, when people were asking what it, what it, what what it was. Oh, okay. Cool. Are they out? Did he? Oh, he probably got one like, to test a prototype or something. That makes sense. Oh, cool. That weight is huge. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like a, a TX board actually, where like the weight takes up most of the bottom of the case. I dig that. Hopefully that does uh, well. I wouldn't mind getting one of those. Homie four eight says, "What's your favorite way to mod a vintage black?" Uh, I mean, lube. Lube is always going to be kind of a front runner for me. Uh, a light coat of something thin, and I pray to God that the vintage blacks that I have are, you know, not too inconsistent and they're fairly smooth at the very least. 
Uh, most of the vintage blacks I've experienced are not that smooth, so or not that consistent, which kind of is a bummer. How much do so vintage I, blacks go nowadays? Oh man, I don't know. I, I I would say probably fifty cents each, maybe a little bit less. Okay, forty or fifty cents each. Like they're they're pretty accessible these days. Like a lot of people just like desolder boards and sell them. So like they're not terribly expensive like they used to be. Um, but yeah, I would lube, spring swap, probably. You know, if you're into it, maybe polycarb films. Same thing most other people do with their vintage blacks. Not really a secret. Pretty much the same answer for me. My alternative answer would be if I had, you know, like, if the question, you know, was defined as I had 200 of them, I would sell those, buy 20 cent get around linears, and mod those and pocket the rest of the money. It's value. Value. Uh, Hashiba is asking, let's say you have an aluminum keyboard that you want to mod. Which kind of paint would you use? Automotive. Yeah, I, I am not an expert in, in painting in the least bit. So I, I have no good answer for that. But hopefully Huey's not memeing that automotive is the right choice. It's a good choice. It might not be the the most cost efficient choice, but it is a yeah, choice. Hopefully, maybe someone in chat can answer that. Some some people are a lot better at finishing finishing stuff <laughs> than uh, than we are. Giggity, just kidding. Uh, okay. So Geo meant Ali asked for MX Silence. Um, I have yeah, they they seem okay. I have used them for MX Silence. I have them in my Tokyo sixty. One problem I have is that um, there's still like a little bit of like a tap when I use them when I bottom out. And that could just be switch orientation. Apparently, it happens a little bit less on, uh, or less noticeably on the Zeal housing MX Xilence. But uh, I can't confirm because I haven't used those long enough to really have an opinion. But seemingly, people seem to be still okay using Aliaz housings because, at least to me, they feel just as smooth, especially after you lube them. And they're cheap. Yeah. They're cheaper, would, cheaper, would, cheaper, they're cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. Yeah. Dahlias are still not cheap, that's for sure. 50 but they're cents. cheaper. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, CO River is asking, how do you like TTC orange switches? Didn't get any. I have like I have like one of them, but I've I I don't I don't have an opinion because I, I don't I've never tried on a full board. I'd like to experiment with TTC switches though. Um, I'm always in the mood for different like alternatives for anything really because it's cool. When new stuff comes out, it's, it's cool. Whether it's good or bad, it's just different, so fun. Uh, Magical Tactility is asking, what board or boards are you guys looking for or want to buy? Uh, well, now this TGR Jane with the massive weight. So, <laughs> and also the, uh, the Zeno 75. Zeno 75 for me. I mean, I want a Zephyr. I'm not going to get it, but I want it. Um, Zeno, um... What else do I actually really... Actually, that's kind of it for me right now. Because right now I have, like, a long-ass review queue and keyboard chores queue and, like, things Huey needs to do relating to keyboards queue that I need to get through before I get anything new, to be honest. Like, cat cat review. CA66 review. Because I know those two... Cat review was grouped by right now and I, I have insider information on when CA66 starts. So I need to get that soon. And then, you know, possibly doing, like, a meme review or... 910 reviewer, insert one of my tons of boards that I haven't reviewed yet, so, or, so yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, for me, definitely Zeno, and I, I need, like, a really nice, epic, high-quality TKL in my collection. Because, like, I really don't have one. I have the Time TKL right now, which is which is kind of nice in a lot of ways, but it's also not for me in a lot of ways. Um, it's way too tall for starters. It's super I, I, tall. It, it's, it's outrageously tall, and... For, for my personal comfort, it's, it's too tall. If you still have an extra 5-degree case, turn it upside down and use that as a wrist rest. I do not. But that's that's a hilarious idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Zeno, the Zeno 75%, probably the only 75% I, I want. And then I, I, I would love to either buy one of these upcoming TGR jeans or uh, the number one, potentially. I think both of those are probably going to be pretty stellar options as far as TKLs go. 
but I'm not looking forward to seeing the price on either of them because I know it's going to be very high. I hope it's not. I'd love to be proved wrong, but I feel like it's going to be kind of high. <laughs> All right. Uh, Pixel Pusher is asking, will we ever see premium custom plastic cases in the enthusiast market? I've been asking that for like two years now. Not anytime soon, no. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could kind of make an argument that like Polycarb polycarbonate is, is it. housings are, are, are pretty in right now. So I will say no except for exceptions. For example, polycarbonate is a plastic, you know, high end my PC nine ten, right? That's definitely one. And I have another great example to show you. My unicorn all acrylic. But a lot of people would trade their aluminum boards for this all acrylic one. Um, because it's kind of the bee's knees. Like, ask Nathan how much he kind of lusts after this board. Because it's amazing. But it's all, it's, it's literally just a layered acrylic board. But it's like the best layered acrylic board ever. So for the most part, premium custom plastic cases, no asterisk exceptions exist. And there's yeah, special absolutely. exceptions. This was a private group buy. This was a PM to join group buy. So, like, it wasn't, like, super out there. You had a PM in to join this group buy, right? It's like, none of these were, like, you know, super, super open for people. And that's kind yeah. of why I think my main answer is going to be no. Yeah. No, I, I think I think polycarb boards are going to be, like, polycarbon acrylic are going to be more accessible as time goes on. Um, you know, the, the determining factor here is whether or not they're premium and what you consider premium, because that can kind of vary from person to person. I think, I think a plastic board can be really, really good if done right. But, uh, you know, I, I think, I think metal is, is still kind of like the in thing and like, you know, people want heft and they want that durability and, you know, stuff like that. And I... I don't know. I, I can kind of take it or leave it. I like metal as much as the next guy, but I'm always interested in seeing more cool things done with things that aren't metal, like polycarbonate and acrylic. And uh, Corian, the upcoming Corian board. I'm pretty excited for that as well. Um, but yeah, I would love to see more plastic cases that are nice in the market. Uh, Polyzoo is asking, since Huey opened the topic for discussion, what do you two think is best way to keep folks interested in the hobby without feeling like it's a daunting rabbit hole? Personally, I think boards that offer hot swap are fantastic at introducing people into the idea of new switches. Just curious about thoughts from you two. You're absolutely right. That's great yeah. question. Yeah, good question. And uh, your your perception on it is also good. Hot swap is is definitely up there anything people don't have to buy specialized equipment for uh, i.e soldering in this example or desoldering or you know etc is is big when people don't have to use special tools just to you know take out switches and put in different switches that's a big deal so Absolutely. yeah that's, that's that's a really big thing you know having hot swap definitely helps people especially who are new who, who want to you know feel like it's they don't have to go super deep around the hole they, they can just you know buy switches which not that much compared to like a whole board and they can just basically have a new typing experience by just swapping switches but you know i think that question also expands for what about people like brian and i you know people who a hot swap board <laughs> wouldn't be enough necessarily for us to quench that thirst and for, for there's kind of like a two-pronged route one would be like taking what you have existing and modifying it for you know someone new hot swap would be the easy way for brian and i it would be you know lubing spring swapping that those things those tune-ups those changes is what helps keep it fresh for us for a minimal amount of money just the work it takes but one of the things that i do personally this doesn't really apply for everyone but i know there's a lot of people who can risk understand the sentiment um that's why I review a lot of boards I have because a lot of times Brian will ask me like, Hey, we do really need to be working on that review that like basically no one else can get for me. It's a way to appreciate what I have. If you can look back at your collection, and like really appreciate what you have. That kind of like helps you realize like this isn't a daunting rabbit hole. I have some kick-ass boards. I'm really happy with them and I should, you know, until I'm ready to get my next one, I'm going to be really happy with these. And I totally am. And that's kind of why I, you know, I do reviews. I do reviews on boards that, 
sometimes you guys can't get. But I also want to inform you guys about these, what's the pros and cons, and whether or not that knowledge will carry on into future boards and future products. But for me, it's I, I appreciate what I have, and I do that by reviewing a lot of times. Or I complain about it by reviewing. Yeah, it, it's... I don't know, man. He says he he specifically says keep folks interested in the hobby, not necessarily bring folks into the hobby. Although I guess that might be part of it. But I I think I think it's just it's always innovation, right? You come out with more things that people go ooh and ah about, like you know different mounting solutions, gasket mount, you know new switches, new styles of switches, new styles of tactility that we haven't seen before in a switch, you know new. New, um, you know, material for plates and cases and caps and switches. Like we have the palm switches coming out, and you know now we have, you know, we have like reverse die stuff is becoming more thing. Double shot PBT is starting to become a thing. Like just like new things that people can just be like, oh, that's interesting. I haven't experienced that before. I think that's a lot of it because it's it's all this hobby is mostly about the physical experience. You know how you feel when you're typing on your keyboard. Like what does it do for? You? And I think just having enough customization and new things continuously coming out, which they are, is good enough to keep most people in the hobby. Yeah. Right. Uh, Nebula is asking, hamburgers, grilled or smashed on cast iron? Grilled. Hmm. Smashed on cast iron. I, I'm gonna go against you on this one, Huey. I'm gonna say cast iron over grilled for me. I think a good a good burger is always done in a pan. I think you can get awesome burgers that are grilled, but in a in a pan, a really you know a pretty high heat pan, so you still get like a little bit of pink. I need my burgers medium. Smashed at smashed though. I'm not completely sold on. I've I've had smashed burgers on numerous occasions from numerous places. And I think they can be very good. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. The one thing I do like about smash burgers is is when you um, when you smash something else in with it. So you know, a popular choice is onions. You uh, you know you you have your burger patty, you smash it down, you put some onions like all over one side of it, you smash that in, you know, you flip that over, and you get the onions really nice and kind of like crispy and integrated with the meat. I think that could be a really cool thing. So, out of those two options, I'm definitely going to say smashed on cast iron. Great question, though. <laughs> I can talk about burgers forever. Burgers are good. Geo follows it up. Stuffed burgers, good or sacrilege? Uh, situational. Situ- very situational. Good. I would say good over sacrilege. Because I've, I've made some pretty awesome stuffed burgers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just- you get a little bit of uh, bacon and blue cheese in there, or like some kind of like nice melty cheese. So when you bite into it, it starts to ooze out a little bit. You know, you top that a top cheese that shot a, right in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. You top that with like a fried egg, like a fried egg mix, like anything better with like a bit of a runny yolk there. If a burger, if you're not worried about your outfit while you're eating a burger, it's not a real burger. Like. You're gonna you're gonna drip on this burger. There's gonna be meat juices and cheese flowing all over you. That's a proper burger, my friends. All right, uh, Kiz, Kizap88 is asking, what's what is your opinion on people copying other people's designs for boards, as as a DIY one DIY one off only project? For example, copying, I don't know this username. At the Ice Arcade's fully customizable split board, search for designing a custom toper board on Death Authority, but using MX switches instead. Uh, hmm. You know, we've gone into pretty detailed lengths on this show several times now about copying, plagiarism, things of that nature, and it's it's one that really doesn't have a conclusion because so many people think different things about them. I think if it's a blatant copy, that's kind of a problem. But I also, at the same time, think that if you are that worried about something, you should be patenting your designs, which I know can cost money, et cetera, et cetera. But like, if it's that, if that is that important to you, you got to do something about it, right? So I, I... 
as far as blatant cloning goes, generally speaking, I would say no. I'm not a fan at all, unless you know people have the 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 moral wishes and respect of the the person that originally did it. But this is this is a topic that's just so hard to tackle, man. Gonna be we've done it so many times. Yep. 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 I want to chat. It. I was going to say, everyone sure, chat, sure, like, sure. okay, okay, Americans won. We don't add egg to everything. Eggs are great with a lot of things, though. Geo, when people say steak and eggs, well, at least I don't put the eggs on my steak. They're served next to the steak, but, like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's a that's a Canadian confusion kind of thing. Um, just That's just a breakfast thing, too. Come on. Yeah. Steak and eggs? It's the incredible edible egg, man. The egg does so much. It is such a versatile ingredient. It's, it can it's, be so it's, awesome. It's the Somebody powerhouse is. of my plate. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's Top Clack, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this wonderful episode on the 26th of July. Hey, the 23rd of August. That's coming up in a month. That's going to be our two-year anniversary. Two years, Brian. Oh, my goodness. Holy moly. Time goes by quickly. Um... <laughs> We'll have more teasers for you as the weeks go by. When we start getting really close to the competitions, we'll start letting you guys know what they are, when you can sum- when you can when they open, when you can submit, and when the submission deadlines are. Um, so keep all those in mind. Those will be coming up soon. So if you are a person of many talents, maybe you want to take a shot at winning some awesome prizes, including but not limited to possible amounts of awesome things like key sets. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. And maybe some epic keyboards. Who knows? Maybe, and maybe other not. things. Yeah. But all, all good things in time. All good things in time. Until then, thank you everyone so much for joining us. Brian won't be here next week, but I will be here holding down the fort. But you know, try to try, try to try to bother Brian, guys. To hopefully he can do a special, you know, post Seattle episode with Brandon or someone from the Seattle community because that would be awesome. I know you guys really like the one I did with Pudsey, so I think it'd be awesome if you know Brian could find time to do the same thing. But we'll see if he can fit it in his schedule. Brian, enjoy your concert next week and your mini vacay. Until then, everyone. I will see you next week, and we'll have a wonderful top clack.